All right, uh, we are going to actually cover a couple of topics for our last part of this lecture. And I'm sorry that this went on a little bit longer. Uh, we want to keep them shorter, but we're kind of getting started in the class, so it's going to take a little bit of initial legwork to get started. And what we want to do is talk a little bit about Newton's second law and uh, free body diagrams. And that's really going to be the bulk of what this last lecture is on. And we're going to do some problems in class, so come prepared to do those. And then I'm going to talk very briefly about Newton's third law from the perspective of AP physics and this uh, technique of drawing free body diagrams we're going to go over. So we're really going to study that hard in class and do problems. And um, we're going to be doing that in class in the context of problems and AP practice. So that's really the three things we want to cover. So these first two topics, Newton's second law and Newton's third law, we're going to talk about um, in this video lecture. But really the bulk of the third law and the bulk of the problems in practice we're really going to do in class. So we're going to make that transition um, from lecture outside of the classroom to work problems and questions inside the class. Um, so once again, we define a force as a, as a push or a pull. And to understand how forces affect objects, we're going to employ what is known as a free body diagram. Um, and the way this works is when we draw free body diagrams, we're going to have systems, you know, objects, boxes, cars, people, bridges, and we're going to draw arrows representing the forces on these things. And what we're going to do is we're going to label each arrow with a capital letter and two subscripts. So for example, suppose I'm pushing a box with my hands. Um, I would write that like this. I would draw an arrow representing a push on the box. I would label it with a capital letter F for the force, and then a B for the box, and an H for my hand. So there's two subscripts. So the thing that actually feels the force, that experiences the force, gets the capital letter B, and the capital letter H is the thing that, put, that produces the force, which is my hand. So I call it the force on the box due to the hand. And that's how you read it. Um, so for example, um, just to kind of say, but in Newton's second law, we're saying, well, what happens when the forces don't balance out? They don't cancel, there's something left over. Those forces cause the objects to accelerate, and let's be clear, to accelerate means two things. You can change speed, you can change direction, and in fact, you can also do both at the same time. So I can speed up while going around a curve, or I can slow down while going around a curve. So to accelerate in physics means you change your speed, or you change your direction. And, of course, the way we write this complicated sentence above is with a simple sentence. And let's actually sort of read this. It says sigma f equals ma. And what that really means is I add up all the forces. And the effect is the mass, which is this m here, that I'm concerned about actually accelerates. So add up the forces, and the effect is the mass accelerates. So the forces are the cause. And the acceleration is the effect that happens to the mass. And again, just getting into this uh, representing forces pictorially, uh, um, there's going to be several types of force that we're going to encounter in the systems that we study. So we're going to encounter weight. And let's be clear, weight is not mass. I know that that's used interchangeably in chemistry. In AP chemistry, we're going to be very rigorous in physics. Weight, properly speaking, is the force exerted by a planet by means of gravity on an object. So it's weight on a mass due to Earth or the Moon or whatever planet's pulling it. Then we have tension. When we've got a rope or a cord in a system, it's going to exert a force at both points of connection. And we're going to see that in an example. And it exerts a force that comes out of the object. So we'll actually draw that properly in a little bit. So we've got weight. We've got tension. We're going to have contact forces. And to be honest, a contact force just means I need to represent some force F. I don't want to give it some specific labels. We'll just call it a contact force and label it with an F. And some of these forces we'll actually um, get to when we talk about Newton's third law, and we'll discuss that more in lecture. We have friction force, uh, which is when one object moves across the surface, and that surface uh, acts to bring that object to rest. And we're going to come up with an equation for friction and deal with that, um, possibly in the next set of lectures. I did leave one off here, which is the normal force, which is forces that are perpendicular to a surface, um, and that's represented with a capital N. So you're hearing the words, we'll actually encounter it in our free body diagrams. So, um, the best way to learn it is with an example. So let's kind of review what our approach is going to be. We're going to draw a free body diagram. Again, this is a pictorial way of representing the left side of Newton's laws, which is sigma f. 
Uh, once the free body diagram has been drawn, we find the vector components of each direction and write down one equation for each component. So we draw a picture of the forces, we write down an equation using Newton's second law, um, and then we're going to solve those equations to figure out what's going on. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to draw a picture, we're going to set up equations, and we're going to solve equations. That's what those three bullet points mean. So here's a typical example. We've got a box of mass m pushed along a frictional surface. And for this one, I'm actually not going to use numbers. Um, I'm just going to say there's a force f. And what I'm saying here is I've already given you this force. So it would be some 10 newton force acting on a box. And the box has a mass, just abstract letter m, or value m. And that's something we need to get used to in AP physics is we're not going to use numbers as much. We're going to be using letters. So what I want to do is I want to figure out what the acceleration of this box is. Now, it's a box, it's got mass m, and I'm sure most of you would say, well, divide the force by the mass. We're going to do a little bit of overkill. We're actually going to do this with free body diagrams because I want you to be aware of every single force that arises in this situation. So, as in our first example from the last lecture, we have weight, which is what the box feels because Earth exerts a gravitational pull. We write this as W on B due to E and draw an arrow just like this. So W, B, E. Then we think for a second and realize, hey, wait a second. If the only force acting were weight, this box would fall straight through the floor. We have to conclude that the floor must push up on the box to keep it from falling. So there is this upward normal force that we call N, normal again meaning perpendicular. It's on the box and it's from the floor surface. So we draw an arrow. We label it capital N for normal, B for box, S for surface. So it's normal on the box due to the surface. It is not the natural force. It is the, you, know, you can come up with all kinds of names. It is the normal force. Normal as in perpendicular. You need to memorize that. And I'm going to be very pedantic and call you on that terminology in class. So there's our free body diagram and our object. I just actually drew it on the object, and you'll do things like this in the AP. And let's set up our equations. Now, Forces are vectors. I use the term vector, and we're going to explore the idea of vectors in more detail, but for now what this means is this. When you set up force equations, each mass gets its own equation, and each direction gets its own equation. So in this case, I need to write down equations for the y, for the vertical stuff, and for the x, the horizontal stuff. So in the x direction, um, I know the box is actually being accelerated because I'm pushing it, so I have a and, and I have equations in the y direction, which is with the normal and the weight. So in the x direction, I have a force, um, the applied force, pushing the box to the right. With the effect that, that's what the equal sign is, the mass accelerates to the right. Now let's look in the y direction. The normal force on the floor pushes the block up in the plus y direction. So that's the normal on the box due to the surface. Opposing it, minus sign, is the force of gravity pulling the box downward. And that comes from the Earth. That's what the weight force is. So that's weight on the box due to the Earth. But I've labeled it as the force of gravity pulling the box downward in my words. That's what I'm saying. That's what weight is. And the effect is nothing happens in that direction. So that's a big fat zero. So those are the two equations we set up. So what we conclude is, oh wait, the normal force and the weight are equal to each other, or we can say they cancel out. The second y direction equation, if you remember, is going to become important when we study friction and we use the friction as fun equation. So uh, let's do a little bit more of a complicated example. Uh, in this example, we're actually going to be setting up a few equations, and what I'm going to be doing with you is making you actually finish up this problem, um, and you're going to submit the answer to me on Google Docs uh, a little bit later on. So we have uh, two ropes, each with tensions in them. Um, and we're going to learn how to label tension and free body diagrams in this problem. So I have mass one uh, with the rope pulling it, and then it's connected to mass two with the second rope. And what I'm told is T1 is 8 newtons, M1 is 3 kilograms, and M2 is 1 kilogram. So notice something. This is your second physics class. I didn't review the fact that the label on forces, the units for forces, is newtons. You're expected to have that known by now. So you should remember that masses are always in kilograms. If you see grams in physics, change it to kilograms. And forces are measured in newtons. Okay. So I've already started my free body diagrams. A little yellow dot for mass one, a little blue dot for mass two. 
Um, the reason we use points will become clear later on when we talk about a later topic, but we're going to label them as points separately. And I've already labeled T1, and we're going to write these forces as weight BE and draw an arrow in that direction um, that the weight pulls the box. We'll also draw the upward normal forces on each box on the floor, so I'm doing this a little bit faster because you've seen this twice already. So let's get those on there. Uh, I got the normal force um, from the floor on box one, and we got the weight on box one due to the earth, so that's W1E. And again, for the second box, same thing. We got the normal force going up and the weight force going down, so N2S opposed by W2E. Notice, mass one is more massive, so the weight force has a larger arrow. Box two is less massive, it has a smaller arrow, and notice mass has nothing to do with size. A rule for ropes, watch carefully. Tension forces on ropes occur at all points of contact, and they point away from the object. So notice rope 2 touches box 1 and box 2 at the end. So we're going to label forces at each end of the boxes. That's just how ropes work. So again here, I have rope 2. It's got a force going out of box 1. That's just the rule. T2 pulls box 1 back. So we write that on there. So T2 um, you point along the direction of the rope away from box 1. And the other thing is, rope 2 is also connected to mass 2. So you write T2 at mass 2 pulling outwards. Now, we're going to leave these free body diagrams here, and we're going to set up the equations. So once again, each mass is going to get its own set of equations. We're going to have y equations for box 1 and box 2, and x equations for box 1 and box 2. Each mass gets its own set of equations, so here's what I mean. Um, the y direction, first of all, remains the same for each box. So I'm going to write the normal on 1 pointing up, opposes the weight on 1 due to the earth, and the effect is nothing in the y direction. Same with the second box. I have the normal on 2 due to the surface, opposing the weight on 2 due to the earth, and the effect is those two forces have a tug of war and nothing happens in the vertical direction for either box. Now, there is acceleration in the x direction and what we're going to do is we actually read the free body diagram to write down the equation. So for example, for box one, notice I've got T1 pointing to the right and we always say traditionally in math that right is the positive direction if we use Cartesian axes. So T1 is a positive force pointing in the opposite direction is T2, which is an unknown force, so I made it blue. We're solving for that. Okay. And that's what it says in the problem. Find the tension in the second rope. So we oppose T1, because we're pointing in the opposite way, and the effect is that the mass 1 accelerates. So we're setting up mass 1's equation. There is nothing involving mass 2 in here. There's only M1. Now for the second mass, we only have T2 acting. If you look at the picture pointing to the right, and the effect is it makes mass to accelerate. So those are the equations, and I suggest you write those down, um, and uh, I'm going to actually ask you to solve them in terms of letters and in terms of numbers on the Google Doc. Uh, so you'll have to do that for me. So this is how we set up those equations. What we're going to do a little bit more in class is Newton's third law, but I want to kind of cover it now. And I'm sure in your last physics class you were told that Newton's third law is if object A exerts a force on B, then B exerts an equal and opposite force on A, which is a great way to learn it, and we're going to get to that way of expressing it. And then, you know, you, you were probably told such forces are called third law pairs, and we look for those, and, and we label them, and we use them in problems, and all that good stuff. I'm going to give you guys a way, using this free body diagram technique, to label third law pairs before you even know where they are. And here's what I mean. Our approach will stay true to this physics, but we can actually figure out third law pairs in free body diagrams. I'm going to give you an algorithm, which means you follow this procedure without understanding why it works, and then later on we'll explain. So take a force, say, that's got two subscripts. Switch the subscripts and the direction of the arrow, and then put it on the correct free body diagram that it belongs. So here's what I mean. For example, weight is the pull of gravity on the box due to the earth, so you would have an arrow pointing downwards. What you would do is take the letters, switch them around, so WEM is the pull of gravity on the Earth because the box pulls up on it. So somewhere in the universe would be an arrow 
pointing up with the label WEM. And if you think carefully, you would think, oh, wait a minute, um, that arrow would actually be on the entire planet Earth pulling it up towards the box. So that's the kind of thing we're going to practice in class. If that seemed to go a little bit quickly, you might want to watch this again. But also, we will be covering this in class, so don't panic.